Hey, welcome back to TIG Time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're doing the second segment of a PowerPro Tool 5 SI. Now, in the first part, what we did was aluminum testing, so I'm gonna do something very similar, but I'm gonna do it on DC, DC negative. And I went ahead and I put the, my favorite torch on there. Uh, this is a flex head torch. It does not come with the machine, but it certainly is much more comfortable to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this machine. I was reading through the instructions here, and it was telling me that the machine will light off at 5 amps and go all the way up to 200 amps. So that's, that's a pretty considerable range. I'm not going to get into pulsing or anything else, uh, so I'm just going to run straight DC negative. Uh, the stainless that I've got is just a 16-gauge stainless, but I'm going to see how low I can start the arc, and I'll dwell on edges. Uh, I'll, I'll move over here and trying to weld on an edge is always the biggest challenge. Now in aluminum, uh, it's even more so. In stainless, uh, this should not be a problem. If this machine will go all the way down to five amps, I should be able to sustain the surface tension on it. So I'm gonna do just a, a, a butt weld first, then I'm gonna do an overlay weld on the edge, then I'm gonna change the machine over and I'm gonna test out the high end of it. I'm gonna uh, turn it up to 200 amps. Uh, and I'll do a fillet weld. So uh, let me get my gear on and uh, I'll show you what I'm doing here. Okay, uh, Aquasol has sent me these easy wipes and uh, you know, I always have isopropyl alcohol or acetone at my workbench, but these are, are already impregnated uh, with isopropyl alcohol. So I'll, you know, I'll wipe this off and get all the oils off. Uh, the, re the reason I mention this is because this is easy to use and it's, uh, it's pretty safe, pretty safe environment, so I don't have gallons of acetone hanging around. But uh, the Aquasol people said, if you want free samples of this, um, let us know, we'll let you try it. So one of the things that you can do is go to the well.com forum uh, and ask for one, and uh, uh, they're pretty cool. Okay, well I'm just putting two pieces together, just really trying to test out the low end of the machine. Seems to have real good stability at low end. So I'm just doing my little dab technique. Get to the end of the puddle right here and I'm backing off and that's really important. So what I did was I came to the end of the puddle and I backed off to see if it really did work at 5 amps, and it does. So uh, I did a bead on plate here and we'll do a B-roll for you in a minute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right on the edge uh, and see if it'll sustain the edge. Okay, so it's sustaining the edge here really nicely. I don't know, I'm probably running around five to seven amps. So it's doing the job. I'm gonna back off on amperage and, and there it is. Okay, so I'm going to set up on quarter inch thick steel right now. Uh, I'm going to run the amps up quite a bit. I'll run it up to 200 amps. I may not need the full 200 on steel, but uh, I'll have it set there just in case. I'm going to continue to use this small torch. Again, it's an air-cooled torch. This is 150 amp rated, but I can run 200 amps for periods of time without a problem. So let me get my sample set up here and I'll be with you in just a minute. Okay, I've already pre-tacked this part. You know, steel wells up so nice, so easy. It just doesn't really require the same amperage. So, you know, sometimes you uh, you don't try to do everything in one pass. You do a nice burn-in root pass, just like this. you need added strength, then you go ahead and you run a second and third pass over it, but you know the root pass is, is the strongest of all of them. It 
So, the nice thing about TIG is you can just stop your weld very slowly. I even circle it a little bit like this. And then back off of my foot control. Okay, so in, in, in welding steel, I didn't use the full foot pedal. I, I set the machine at 200 amps. Uh, it probably took 150 amps uh, to do a nice root pass. And like I say, if you want to do a root pass, uh, I, li I like to use thinner rod for a root pass, uh, like I'm using 045, and you really burn it in nicely. And then you can come back and you can go 1 16th diameter or 332 if you want to f quickly uh, fill it in. You know, there's a lot of applications out there where the root pass absolutely is a necessity with TIG, just so you can burn it in. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people come in and, and they'll do a fill pass with either the MIG or the stick process. So uh, we'll take a look at this. And uh, this is uh, pretty normal, uh, you know, on DC. I really expected it to, to be strong, and it is. DC is very stable. This machine lights off at five amps. It's, uh, that's, that's very, very good. So uh, five amps to 200 amps. Again, I don't get into the pulsing aspect. You may want to put in special ripples or you get some artistic effect out of it. But uh, other than that, it, uh, it just welded up very nicely. So thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.